I don't know, it's interesting that you said in the first part that you like to consult as many, you know, surround yourself with clever people before you have a bet. Um, is, is, you know, is the, the combination of a good gambler, somebody that knows when, you know, when to bet, and the shrewdies, is that a good combination that works? Different style of punters, definitely. I mean, if you go, if you look in my book, what we'll, what we'll be doing at Lifford, the, the seven um, different guys with the prices at Coventry, and they, they, they were so different. And, and that, the, so the more different styles you've got, and, I, and knowing, the, knowing most of them for a while, you know their different styles and their traits. So literally, you know, you could, you could price around that and certain people that you know love a skinny one. That, that never, so, like, it's like I said to Christian, the German, when he worked with Tony Bloom, they always, I'm an unders man, and they were always overs. They never, ever, ever bet. They never, ever bet the unders. And I said to Christian, just do me one thing, because this German football was hard to get on at the time and you're picking your bets. I said, just ring me when you bet the unders. I said, when you have, when you have an unders bet, I said, ring me. And three times a year, unders bets, and oh, five out of six for sure one. So that's a, just a, a little example of how when people bet, you know, knowing how, knowing what people how people bet and what their strengths are, and, and leveling that up, which is the same thing as what you're saying, a different style into the algorithm is is perfect. And yeah. I, I, that's exactly how I thought that commentary algorithm was. And you know, the most of it got two of the guys in the algorithm were on the same pitch at the track and didn't even know it, but and their prices were completely individual. And if you could get a set of prices like that for everything, like the snooker, the snooker was myself and a panel and, and, and Phil Yates, it was, Phil Yates was the best snooker journalist and best snooker judge. And he wasn't a gambler, but he'd just literally go through every match and price up out of a hundred what he thought both matches were. So when I was doing the snooker, basically it was the, it was the three prices, exactly the same as when Tony Bloom started doing the Asian handicap. It was me, Tommy and Lizard, and he'd go in the middle so literally, you only need three to people's right algorithms. If you've got three real solid nuts, that's that, you know that's just, that is that's 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 all you need, and 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 that's that's basically if you if you could get three different styles and know know where their strengths and weaknesses were, that makes it even stronger. Now you, you've been you've been betting all your life. So are the people that you can so people that you've sort of gathered along the way, or do people contact you, or do you? spot somebody whose opinion you really you know sort of value and contact them is it, or is it something that builds or is it a team you've got and had for a long time how does it work um luck really i suppose especially nowadays because most of the betting is on the most of the profits on the horses and i i bumped into glenn well, i knew glenn from portsmouth days and uh but i've always been a judge of judges i think i think i've i've always managed to you know and i've always embraced other judges i've always sort of wanted i've wanted them under my umbrella Sort of as soon as I can, really, and I've. Uh, that's always, if, you know, I wouldn't be shy to ask someone for their phone number if I thought they were a, a winner. And I've always, I've, I think I've always had more respect for other punters than most punters have. A lot, of, a lot of punters that win don't have that much respect for other punters. Whereas I think I've always had that respect and always wanted to know what they think and and and, and get them on the tissue. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm assuming that you um, that you don't have loads of bookmakers accounts anymore. So how do you get? You know, what's your main way of getting on? Uh, no, I tried it, like everyone with the compliance thing because I'd like to mainly for anti post stuff really. But uh, I've got a couple of guys who get me on small with them. But it used to all be bet fair, and now it's all bet fair in the tote. Because as I say, I, it, is, it is jackpots and rollovers that I, that, I, that I love doing. And with the horses now on the tote, they're betting the six six percent. So sometimes you you know you can bet the bet on bet on betfair on the whole and have both. So I have the, I have I have a split screen and, and, and play betfair and tote and the odd anti post bets I try and get on. But I won Max Verstappen was my was my clue this year and it's uh, it's taken over my life. I've watched every. I've always I used to love the Grand Prix as a kid because there was nothing else on a Sunday. There was no horse racing and no football. So I used to study the Grand Prix massively as a kid as a youngster and. This year, I've, I've just been obsessed with Hamilton and uh, and, and Verstappen, and um, and uh, I think it's gone a bit sour. I think the sport sold itself going to Saudi Arabia, and I thought that was a horrific watch on Sunday. I didn't like any of it, and compared with the rest of the season, and I thought that the the la the, 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 the qualifying lap of Max Verstappen on Saturday, I watched it with Jamie Hart over in Dublin, and I just I've just never seen anything like it. That is as close to being on the edge in sport I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I just want to talk about, um, 
you know, it, the bookmakers these days, even if you you win a bet, you can't get your bets on. So they're, they're generally trying to flush out guys like you that, that make it pay. Do you think with all these affordability checks and all the rest of it that it's going to be harder and harder for people like you to carry on with your careers? Well, I think the fixed odds, yes, I do. And um, to be fair, the one bad thing about the tote is you have to go through all that stuff as well. But for me, I, I think I think the way the, the, the bookmakers go, I, I think all this uh, build a bet and all this hackers and all this, everything they advise you to do is bad advice. If you if you get to the Ray Winston stuff, it's next goal score of 14 to one, correct score. I mean, build a bet is filth. So. I think that the new, I think, like in education, I think there's been, the last 20 years, the education system has just been taken over by, I've said, I've said it for 20 years, and I think that the next generation are going to are gonna be a bit more clever and a bit wise, and I think punting's going to go through that, where people are more understanding of the odds and the math, and I think that the, I think that um, there's going to be a big change, and I, I, I sincerely hope that the total of the main benefactors for it, but... That's how, that's how I see it going, basically, with the, the, the one big exchange and, and, and a tote account with, 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 with on a level playing field. Whereas before, one, one big rebate, it was getting a massive rebate and no one else could win. Now it is a complete another level playing field with all the rebaters getting a maximum 11% and all the man in the street getting 10%. If you just put 50, if you just put two pound in, if you just invest two pound on the scoop six now, you get 10% bonus. And the rebaters are going, only getting 11. So from, in the space of one year, it's gone from being the worst bet in the world to the best. And I think that, I think the race courses and horse racing needs a fresh market. I think it's crying out for it. The industry SP has been, everyone's been trying to find out the new SP. And I think that's what it will be. I think it'll be like the Australian model. And, um, and, and that, 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 so that's, that's how I, I was, and I think more than ever, horse racing needs another market. Because the Betfair market completely and utterly slaughters the, what is called the industry SP, which is garbage. So I think 12 months from now, you'll have the, industry, you'll have the Betfair market and the tote. And the tote will, be, the tote will find a way of... Oh, they're betting to very low percentages now, but to actually show it, to actually have the SPs with a low margin, like we're going to do at Lifford. Everything there will be 10% on course and SPs. And I think that's what will happen, hopefully, for horse racing in Britain and hopefully the betting market. Okay, now I want to take you back to the, you mentioned the, the total, you mentioned the scoop six. Now we never met before today, but we nearly came close because what, what, one of the syndicates I was in collaborated with you, unfortunately Air Force One got beat, but Remember you were a massive, massive scoop six player and the scoop six was real big for racing because that, when Agnes had it, when it, it was on the front page of the tablet. So what happened in the scoop six and why, you know, uh, do you still play it? Well, I am again now, I will again now. Uh, the scoop six, um, the tote in the hands of in the hands of Bet Fred and Phil Sears with the one big shark, as I again I wrote about in the book, getting massive rebate. No one else could win, and no one else was playing it. But as I say, that's changed now. But it's taken such a bashing. It went off the TV first. That was a, that was a that was a big thing. It went off the TV, and then and then of course with with, with the re, with the rebate unbalance. Um, it just become impossible to play, but now it's a level playing field again. I do think that um, it, it will it will it will regenerate again. I do think it will be um, it will be a, it will be a big success. But the, like I say, with the problem with the scoop six was, if the big rebate was getting the rebate, he was also guaranteed of the place dividend. You see, and that gave the the, the the big shark far far too much of an advantage. And although we haven't had a big rollover for a while. Same as the jackpots. The fact that there's so much less toxic money in the pool and more gradually, week by week, there's less of that toxic money and more of the normal money returning and they just need the right results and a good run. But um, ultimately, you know, I, I do think that um, it, 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 will, it will make some kind of return. But it was the best, the best gambling time of my life was with the Scoop Six and doing the, the rollovers was, was just great fun. And every time we collaborated, we always won it, and um, and every single time, not only did we win it, but the other people that won wouldn't have done. Once there was 17 of us at Utox, and we all pulled together, and none of us would have got it if we hadn't teamed up. And the other eight guys who didn't, none of them got it, and we had the maximum share out. And um, that was that, that was a special day, and that was thanks to Jim Kremin's wife Mary at the top. She was a 
fantastic woman for putting it together. The only person we had any problem with was him, um, Veach, Patrick Veach. He wanted to come in once. So I said, yeah, no problem, come in. And never, 13 times we collaborated, and never once did we sign any contracts. Never once did we have anyone we, we was worried about the payment or whatever. I think the last one, the Scottish Greenkeeper got 700 grand and they had to carve it all up. But no, Patrick Veach turned up at Wimbledon with a briefcase and signed this and signed that and signed that. I said, leave me out, Patrick. I said, you're on your own. I said, no need for that. I said, and really looking back on it, you know, not a lot of normal people would have been like Veach, but it just goes to show that the word of gamblers is, you know, is different class. And um, so, I, I, yeah, if I, I, that was a part of my gambling time with the Scoop Six. I would, you know, of all the bets, I would like to make a, make a comeback with the tote. I, 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 the Scoop Six was my favourite. And how many times you with it? Do you even know? Oh, quite, quite a lot. But I mean, the, 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 the amazing story is, if you read my book, I was so lucky that time, the day, the weekend Concord thing, it was so stressed out. It was one time in my life where I, I knew I'd blatantly overstaked. I knew I should have laid out 120. And I laid out 180 because I couldn't cope with the brain damage if I missed it. And the right thing to do was definitely lay out the 120. And if I had it done, I think the Scoop 6 would have sent me skin. The Scoop 6 sent a lot of people skin. Don't worry about that. Because a lot of us, and don't forget at the end, a lot of us didn't know just how much rebate the big old shark he was getting. And we we're all playing the wrong math. And it sent a lot of people skin. And I think if I had have overstaked that day, in, um, in, in, in Italy, in Amalfi, I think that uh, I might have, I might have be, been one of them as well. So you, you've always got to remember your lucky breaks and that was, a, that was a lucky break for me on that Scoop 6 because after that, I never won it for a real, real long time. And um, it, that, that's where a lot of people got, got damaged with it. But um, now it's back to a level playing field, I'm sure it will make a, a big comeback.